Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is part 5 of making a 65C816 breakout board PCB. If you haven't watched part 1 to 4, I recommend you start with part 1 now as I explain in detail what I'm doing and I won't go into it again in this video. So in this video, I will be assembling the final PCB which I've received from the manufacturer. Uh, and we'll be installing it in the breadboard computer. And that's going to help us do a huge cleanup on the breadboards, which I think was overdue. Uh, so that's going to be pretty exciting. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so I've received the breakout board PCB from uh, GRC PCB and yeah, to be honest, I'm quite stoked with the result. I think it looks really great. It's quite compact in the end when held in one's hand. The blue color is pretty cool as well. Let's get to soldering this. So I have all the components that I need here. Let's start by cleaning up the board with alcohol. All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna start by putting in all the sockets. And I'll try to use one of these other boards to hold them while I'll flip it. So because of the way I was holding my soldering iron, I filled up a bunch of holes with solder. So I'm going to clean them up now. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to put some of the decoupling capacitors on the board. Okay, so this is all the IC sockets done. I fetched up some of the uh, decoupling capacitor holes next to them, so I had to clean that up a bit. So let's do the decoupling capacitors next. Okay, so these are all the decoupling capacitors done. Now let's do the resistors and the diode.
Here I'm reflowing some of the joints that had too much solder or that had a weird shape, making sure that every joint is in a good shape. Okay, so these are all the resistors done and the diode. Let's do the resistor networks, the button. The footprint on the DS1813 is really tight, and so I think I shorted the pins here. All right, I believe this is everything. So I had some issues with filling some of the ground holes here with solder, because I used too much of it, I think. And just to be clear, I did not solder any header on the ground pins over here, because on a breadboard, this would just short everything to ground. The purpose of these holes is to add a header for when I want to use this as a mezzanine board on another PCB, such as the whole computer, for example. But yeah. Otherwise it went pretty smoothly. I'm going to do some basic checking. Just wanna see if my power is shorted. So if I take ground, this is ground. Hold on a second. Yeah, I was just touching it with my finger. Um, but yeah, my power is not shorted. Let me check if anything else is shorted to power. Same thing with ground. Just checking some of my pull-ups here. So everything on the address bus should be pulled up by 100k. It should be pulled down on the data bus. Yeah. Okay, everything looks in order as a first check. So the next thing is I'm going to put this board in the cleaner and then we'll try powering it up. So I have the computer here. I'm going to have to disassemble most of the glue logic because I don't have duplicates of some of those chips. This is going to be a one-way process. So hopefully it's going to work. Let's get started. Now I'm going to try to label the cables that cross the breadboards just so I don't mess up later. And as I take components from the breadboards, I'll put them in the PCB.
Okay, so these are all the components cleaned up from the board. That was a lot of wires and I now have the bracket board complete. So now the question is how do I wire it in the breadboard? Okay, so the plan for the wiring is I will be putting the breakout board at the top here, like this. Then I made some PCB versions of those little LEDs and buffer arrangements. So I'll be putting here four of them, like this. I'm not going to touch the LED and the buffers for the control signals here, uh, because there's some work I want to do on that. But this should free up this area of the breadboard. And there we're going to put the address decoding. So basically I'm going to take this and merge it in here to the left. This way we are going to be able to remove these long address and data bus wires. And it should look pretty nice. So let's get started. We can also remove the power LED here because now we have one on the breakup board as well as the decoupling capacitor. And so the next step is I'm going to move the buffer and the NAND gate here to this part of the breadboard. And after that, I'm going to be able to slot in the rest. Um, so I'm going to disconnect the large address and data bus wires here. So we have some space to work. All right, how is that for a simplification? So I'm probably gonna have to continue with the breadboards on the right sides uh, for the peripherals, otherwise it's not gonna fit in a YouTube video. Um, but still, that's pretty cool. Now I have to rewire these and then the address and data bus here. Okay, so I finished drying up the LEDs for the debug module and also the debug clock here, which is now running the CPU. And as you can see, it's now executing code. I've wired up a little knob generator here just to make sure that we are executing something. And yeah, the board seems to be working. I had absolutely no issue with connecting it and making it run like this. Only user error, I had enough by one error on the wiring here and switching a ground connection for a power connection on the clock enable signal here. But otherwise everything worked first time. The next step is going to continue wiring the address bus and the data bus back to the old circuit. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Okay, so I've reconnected most of it. As you can see, it's working. I haven't connected the VIA yet to the computer because I plan to move it on the side here. But otherwise, everything is connected and working. So I'm going to clean up my workbench and rotate the computer again. And then we're going to work on reconnecting the LCD and the VIA. All right. So as you can see, I have to move the VIA that is on this breadboard so that you guys can see everything. And I'm going to move it here and then over it 
on the second breadboard we'll have the LEDs for the via ports and then we'll go down to the LCD and in any other peripherals over here. So let me do that now. All right, we are now back in business. Everything is wired up again. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is the LED for the two ports of the VIA. I have more of these PCBs to make, but I'm missing some parts, so I'll do that in the next video. And those are going to go here. And we now have some space for more functionality to add over here and over here. And in the next video, I think I'm going to start working on the serial communications. So we'll add a 65C51 asynchronous communications interface adapter. And with that, the computer will be able to communicate with the outside world. So stay tuned for that next video. In the meantime, if you have any questions or feedback about this episode, please let me know in the comments. And I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.